So I, your humble Christian apologist, was actually on an atheist call-in show this past weekend, this past Friday night, as a guest host. Yeah, you heard that correctly. Um, it's kind of more a secular slash atheist call-in show, but it's an offshoot of the atheist experience. Yes, so I, your humble Christian apologist, was actually taking calls on the side, in, from inside of the building of the atheist experience. I was one of them taking calls from the public. Um, doesn't get, you know, that's getting pretty far up the ladder if you ask me. Um, this show is done by my boy, Objectively Dan, and it's kind of a new spin on these atheist Christian things. And actually a really, really welcome new spin. It's instead of being more of a apologetics, counter-apologetics, let's debate, type of show. It's way more open-ended and philosophical. It's more conversational. It's more you call in and you say where you're at, and then we have a conversation with you. We're not. It's not necessarily you call in and now we try to prove that you're wrong and that God doesn't exist. And it's such a welcome change of pace. I mean, I cannot tell you how much I approve of this particular approach. I think it's exactly what people need right now. It's just what the doctor ordered in terms of the right approach to these types of conversations. Um, the show itself, being on the inside of it, has more of a philosophical freewheeling vibe that's actually really fun. I mean, I really had a good time with it. It's a really fun experience. I was a fan of the show before I was on it. Now I'm completely enamored with it. It reminded me most, what it reminded me most of is being in college when you'd have these long sort of freewheeling philosophical conversations. You would be hanging out at the campus center with your buddies and you'd have freewheeling philosophical conversations with whoever happened to walk in the door. And you'd have long ones, you know, someone walk in, be a feminist. Okay, now we're talking about feminism for the next half hour. Next person walks in and brings up the sex pistols. Okay, now we're talking about punk rock for the next half hour. And you'd have these long rambling conversations that were really, really, really satisfying and really, really edifying. Um, for entertainment value, I think it's 100% the way to go. I think it's a fun show to listen to, and it's a really fun show to um, experience. I also think that it's really the right approach to these type of conversations. Um, all things being equal, let's assume that Dan as the host grows in his capacity and he starts you know really nailing his thing and getting a really good handle on what he does and getting better at it uh, i could easily see this being the best show out there honestly for these type of conversations honestly i, I don't even think it's close because his approach is so a hundred percent exactly how these conversations should be having it's very similar in in tone and feel to street epistemology. Uh, I know one of the people who was an influence on him was Anthony Magna Bosco. Now the big difference with that, I there are things about the street epistemology that I like, particularly Anthony Magna Bosco. It's a lot more civilized. It's a lot more laid back and let's have a conversation than you know the other types of, sh of debate shows and things like that. The, the one part about street epistemology that I'm not crazy about is that it's always got its own agenda and it's always trying to lead you back to a, a preset conclusion. Um, this doesn't do that. These are more conversations. Yes, Dan is an atheist, but I not. And I was on the show and people would call up and we'd just talk about, you know, someone called up, we'd talk about perennial philosophy. Um, that guy got hung up on other atheist shows. Um, this atheist show, he's welcome. Yeah, let's chat about it. Um, you know, there's another guy called up, and I'm not even sure what we we're talking about. Astrology, uh, astrological eras as they relate to, I don't, I don't even know, to be quite honest with you, I wasn't quite sure what that conversation was about. So yeah, sometimes it gets a little out there, just like it did at the campus center. You know, sometimes someone comes in and they're a little touched, and you sit down and have a conversation with them, and you find out, well, I'm not sure if, I'm not sure if this guy's on a few sandwiches short of a picnic. But, like I said, this actual approach, I think it's very fruitful. I think it, it, if, if this show grows in audience-wise and it becomes popular, and let's just assume a year from now it's got its 50,000 subscribers and it's got a fan base, you know, this could dramatically improve 
these type of conversations overall in all areas, if it starts to catch on and produce other people do do shows in a similar vein or have conversations in a similar vein, I think it could really, really actually dramatically improve uh, the way these conversations are carried out. Uh, I really do. I, I can't say enough positives about this approach. I think it's 100% the right approach. It's, it's what I would call very Shannon-esque. Um, there's an atheist out there. Her name is Shannon. I'm always telling people that atheists in particular need to be more like Shannon. You need to ask yourself in a situation, what would Shannon do in this situation? And this show, is it, it felt very Shannon to me. It felt very Shannon-esque. I, I felt like I was participating in something that had Shannon's guiding spirit over it. But since there's no God, there's no guiding spirit, I don't know how that works. Um, so anyways, overall, I think it's 100% a positive experience. I think it's totally the right tone and attitude and approach to these types of conversation. Like I said, I can't endorse that enough. It's exactly how I think these conversations should go down. They should be more philosophical. They should be more open-ended. They should be more, you know, let's just explore rather than let's conclude right from the start and let's shut you down and prove that you're wrong. Because ultimately, none of us know. And that's what you've got to take into consideration. I do, but nobody else does. Every, none of us know. So if you're starting these conversations from the pro, even if you're a street epistemologist, you're starting this conversation from, I know there's no God, now I'm going to lead you to that conclusion. Well, that's a dishonest premise to start the conversation from. But if you're starting the conversation from, I don't think there's a God, let's start a conversation and have a real conversation. That's a lot more productive as far as I'm concerned, and that's how these conversations should go. So I 100% endorse the show. I was completely, completely ex excited to be a part of it. I thought it was, was a really, really great experience, and I cannot say enough good about the approach. It's how I think these conversations are supposed to happen. So there you have it, kids. Go watch the show, sign up, subscribe, do whatever you do, share it with your friends, tell all your friends about it. It's cool. It's the cool new thing. It's going to take over. It's going to blow up. It's going to be great. All right. There you go, kids. That's all. Amen.